might be in the building. This is a very fluid situation, and it might be that the middle of next week, someone stands up and says, okay, everybody, go back to normal, whatever that was, and we will have inside church next week. We're still going to continue with outside church at 9 o'clock for quite a while for the unforeseeable future because I know that some of you uh, are, are more susceptible to things than other people, and you would like to still have this option to not just get too close to people yet, but our hope is in the very near future we'll do a 9 o'clock parking lot church and an 11 o'clock inside church limited services at first, lim no children's ministry, things like that. And we had hoped that we could do that um, next week, but it's, it's, at this point, it's not really looking probable uh, that we're going to be able to do that. But I know this this morning, God's got this. And I know also this morning that many of you, you're anxious. You are anxious to get back to normal, but here's the thing. What is normal? I don't think we're ever going to get back to normal as we understood normal anyway. I think we're going to be in a new normal. Things are going to be different. I know church is going to be different. I know a lot of things in church have already changed. I mean, we've planted a digital church. We've got so many people watching online. It's absolutely incredible. And it's just, it's great to see. But I want to show you what the word of the Lord says about these kind of things. If you get into your Bible this morning, go to the book of Isaiah chapter 55. This is what the Lord says. This is what he says. Seek the Lord while he may be found. In other words, at times like this, it's a good time to seek the Lord. Times like this, a good time to seek the Lord. Call on him while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man forsake his thoughts. Let him not trust. Let him, let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and, God, and our God will freely pardon him. And then the Lord says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And then he says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, but make it, make it flourish and bud, and so it yields uh, seed to the sower and, and bread for the one who eats, so my word that goes out of my mouth, it will not return empty or void, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. That's what God said this morning. So I want you to pray with me this morning that God's word will achieve its purpose. Come on, pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask for your word just to speak to us, God, to speak into our hearts and speak into our lives. I pray for those right now that are watching online that the word of God would begin to penetrate stony hearts. God, that you would minister hearts, mind, body, and soul, just a healing presence of the grace of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what I know about God this morning? God is not on my timetable. I might be in a hurry to get back to normal, but I'm not so sure that God is in as much of a hurry as I am. I'm not saying that the hour is not late or that God doesn't care. It's just that God doesn't interpret urgent the way that I interpret urgent. You know why? Because his thoughts are not my thoughts. His thoughts are not my thoughts and his ways are not my ways. And I could go on to say, and his timetable is not my timetable. God's on a different timetable than some of us. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my time is now. I want it now. Let me tell you, traffic lights, I think they should change when I pull up to them. Anybody in agreement with that? I think the traffic lights should see me coming and turn green. I've got places to go, people to see. i got things to buy. I have to stimulate the economy. i got to get out there. And I want the door open when I see an opportunity. And you know when I want that door open? I want it open now. I want the door to be open now. If I have a financial need, I want the need met now. If I'm sick, I want to be healed when? Right now. But God says, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. My ways aren't your ways. My timetable is not necessarily your timetable. You might want it now, but that might not be the best thing for you. 
You see, the thing about God, he seems to be late all the time. Have you ever noticed that on our timeline? Seems like he's always late. I mean, it seems like it takes God forever to do something that it should have only taken a minute or two, and then all of a sudden, something that you thought was going to take forever, God seems to be able to do it just like that. I'm like, come on, God, you're just, you're messing with me now. God ever mess with you? He just messes with me sometimes. I mean, there's so much to be said this morning about the timing of the Lord. And he's teaching us this morning. I believe he's teaching us something about waiting upon the Lord. Here's what I know about God this morning. Here's what I know about the things of God this morning. Things that are planted in shallow soil, you know what happens with them? They come up very quickly. I mean, I have seen, and you've probably seen this too, I have seen grass grow on a block. I mean, I've seen road construction sites near the end of the project. I saw this one time. There was two guys, and they were, they were um, in the back of a truck, and another guy was driving, and they had this thing like a cannon. I mean, it was like a water cannon, and it, they were hosing everything down. I mean, it was shooting this stream of green stuff. I'm like, what in the world? And they were spraying it everywhere on the ground. They were spraying it on the logs. It was hitting the telephone poles. They were spraying it 10 feet up the telephone pole. I'm like, what is this stuff? I come back a few weeks later. There is grass growing on the telephone pole. True story. And I'm looking at this and, you know, it wasn't a few weeks that grass on the telephone pole was dead. You know why? Because it had no roots. There are some things that are planted shallow that come up quickly, but they die out just as quickly. But there are things that God plants deep into your life, and it may take a while for them to come up, but you know what? He's teaching us to wait this morning. You know why? Because the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Come on, you got to get excited about that. They that wait upon the Lord, I mean, you know... Getting back to normal too soon might cause you not to wait upon the Lord and then you wouldn't renew your strength. That'd be a bummer, wouldn't it? Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Man, that's an incredible promise from God. But there are some things I want to tell you about waiting this morning. There are some things that I have figured out or some things that I'm learning about what it means to wait. Can everybody hear this? Because I don't want you to miss this. You hear this, good. There's some things that I want. Now, let me tell you, the first thing I've learned about waiting is, let me tell you, I hate it. I, I mean, have you ever been to a store and they say to you, we don't have it in stock, but we can order it for you? I'm like, uh-uh. Let me go find this on Amazon. It'll be here tomorrow. That's evil, isn't it? Just so that you know, Amazon's an evil company. <laughs> I, now, all the people from watching, we got people that watch online that work for Amazon. They're like, uh-uh, you did not just say that. I'm only kidding, okay? I don't know if they're evil or not. That's not for me to say. I'm not here to make eternal judgments. That's God's job. That's right. Man, I hate grocery lines. I hate waiting in doctor's offices. You ever have them bring you back from the waiting room and they put you in an office and you think, well, finally, and then you're in that office for like an hour? I fell asleep in there once. The doctor had to come wake me up. I'm like, don't give me any downtime. I'll sleep. I don't like red lights. I mean, waiting, I mean, it kills me. Y'all remember, do y'all remember cassette tapes? I mean, those are dinosaurs, dudes, but uh, I mean, remember, you, you, if you wanted to hear a song again, you had to rewind it. Or re I mean, if you had a 90-minute cassette tape, that thing took forever to rewind. I could get across town in the length of time some of them things take, took to rewind, especially in interlocking, right? But I'm going, God, this, this waiting thing is killing me. And you know what God says to that? That might be what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring you to an end of yourself. Some of you are like, this waiting, this, this being locked in my house, it's killing me. I want to get back to normal. God's like, not so fast maybe because I'm trying to bring you to an end of yourself just maybe. Think about it. 
Waiting brings us to an end of ourselves. Let me tell you another thing I've learned about waiting. Waiting is an act of humility. Let me tell you what James says about that. In James chapter 4, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Waiting is an act of humility. You know, humble people, are, they're just easy to be around. They've got no pretense. They've got no agenda. There's a humility about them. We like to be around humble people. But what is the pathway to humility? You know what it is? It's waiting. It's learning how to wait. You see, waiting is humbling because it puts us in a posture of dependence. I can't do this myself. Like we said last week, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Some of us don't walk in God's will. You know why? Because we're too busy. We're too busy to wait. We're too busy not waiting. Another thing about waiting, not only do I hate it, but it brings me to an end of myself. Not only does it produce humility in me because it brings me to a posture of dependence. Another thing I know about waiting is waiting is an act of faith. It's an absolute act of faith this morning. You know why? Because it's easy to trust God when you know the way, when you see his hand, and when you have enough. But when you don't see anything, when you're not feeling it, man, and you trust God anyway, that's faith. When you trust God and you don't see anything, that's what real faith is. It's easy to trust God when everything's coming into place. You see, when you're willing to wait because you believe that God's going to come through, that begins to produce some real faith in you. You mean, I mean, you show me a person that's unwilling to wait, and I will show you someone who's acting in their own strength. You show me a person who won't wait, and I'll show you a person who's self-made, who probably doesn't play well with other people. They're not team-oriented. They accomplish very little of anything of any value, and they're always seeking something new because they're unwilling to wait. You show me someone that's unwilling to wait, and those will be the characteristics that begin to pop up. They don't act in great faith because they can't really do anything that they can't see God doing right now. Got to see it. Let me tell you another thing about waiting is that it strips you of your pride. You know why it strips you of your pride? Because it puts you in a posture of having to receive something from God that you can't do yourself. You see, God wants you to receive what he's giving instead of trying to take what he's not giving. God wants you to receive what he's trying to do in your life rather than just, you know, God, I'm going to take what you're not doing. I mean, imagine for just a moment in the first century that very first charismatic church in the book of Acts. You remember that church, the book of Acts? I mean, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, you're going to receive power. And in Acts chapter 2, you remember the story that they heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind and tongues of fire came down and they all began to speak in tongues and, whoa, man, they were having church. But did you know there's a timeline between the time that Jesus said, you're going to receive power, and the time that they received power? Remember there was a timeline there? And you know what they were doing in that timeline? I mean, we think, man, Peter was up there, and he was pumping them up. Man, they were getting ready for a move of God. No, they weren't. You know what they were doing? They were having a business meeting. They were electing new officers. You talk about boring. They were electing the guy that was going to replace Judas. And they were doing what? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to Judea and Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Judea and the uttermost parts of the earth, but you are to wait until that comes to pass. In other words, just keep doing what your hand finds to do. You know what they were doing? Having a business meeting. They weren't pumping anybody else up. They were just having a business meeting. You see, when God chooses to visit a church, you don't have to worry about working something up. He can do it without your help. And waiting puts me in a posture of receiving what God is giving. Strips me of my pride. Well, I did this. Woo, man, we, we worked. Wasn't that a great Sunday? Oh, yeah, man, everybody was pumped up. I don't want to be pumped up. I want to be godded up. Somebody say amen. 
There's only one way to come to an understanding of God's timetable. You know, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Then I took it to the next level and said, my timetable is not your timetable. While that's not in the Bible, I believe it's biblical. My timing is not your timing. And the only way to come to an understanding of God's timing is waiting. You've got to learn to wait. My flesh is incapable of tuning in to God's timing. Because my flesh wants it now. My flesh wants this thing to happen now. But waiting is a spiritual act of faith. You see, the true test of, spiritual, of spirituality happens in moments of crisis. When it's past the midnight hour, when you think that God should have showed up a long time ago, and it seems that God's not ever going to show up. I mean, here's the thing. At that moment, will you take matters into your own hands, or will you continue to wait on God? You know, in some instances right now, people are tired of waiting. We want to get back to normal, and they're starting to take matters into their own hands. You know why we're not meeting next week? Because we were asked kind of not to. We did the math. You know, we, we, we did the math inside the building, and, and the 10-foot rule, the 10-people rule is still in place for meetings, and the 6-foot rule is still in place. And I said, you know what? If we go back in the building at 6 foot apart, we got to take almost all the chairs out. There won't be no place. You get 20 people inside there, and there is no way that we can stay 6 feet apart. It's not possible. 6 feet apart means there's only 6 chairs in the back section of the church. You follow what I'm saying? It's just not possible. So this is a very fluid situation. It may change tomorrow. We don't know. But as far as we know right now, phase one that our governor announced just this last Thursday, Friday, whatever it was, didn't really look like we could go back to business as usual. And guess what, church? I don't want to go back to business as usual. I want this event to leave a, ma a lasting mark on who we are. I want it to have changed you in such a way that you realize that you are a vital part of the kingdom of God. That God has a vital plan for you. I don't want you to give up calling each other, praying for each other, encouraging each other. See, God works with people. He uses people who have learned to wait, who've learned to wait in his presence. You know, we were reading from Isaiah just a moment ago, and as I'm going to wrap this thing up, get my musicians to come back to their instruments, in just a moment, we're going to pray, and we're going to go out on a limb this morning. Last week, we said, you know, if you need prayer, turn on your flashers, and someone will come by your car and pray for you. We're going to do that again this week. If you're here this morning, and as we're praying, you need prayer I'm going to invite you to just turn your flashers on and the car next to you or behind you or whatever. They might see that. Some of my prayer team will see that. They're going to be moving through the parking lot in just a moment. And they're, going to, they're not going to get too close. They're going to lay hands on your hood ornament, you know, and that's, that's the anointed part of your car, I guess, and whatever it is. And we're going to pray for you. But, you know, if, you just, if you'd like someone to distance pray for you as, after everybody leaves, maybe... Get out of your car and, and come up here near, near the drive through area, and without getting too close, someone will, will pray with you just kind of face-to-face. -face. Not too close face-to-face, -face, you know, six-foot face-to-face, but you get the idea. But I want you to see this in Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? This is what Isaiah said. Do you not know and have you not heard? The Lord is the, everla the, Lord, the everlasting God. He created the heavens and the earth. And here's the thing about him. Even in the midst of this waiting, here's what happens. The Lord will not grow tired. He will not grow weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even young people grow tired and weary. Even young men stumble and fail. Now, you know this part. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I love this part. They will soar. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You're going to soar. You're going to run. You're going to walk. You're not going to grow weary if you learn to wait upon the Lord. Waiting's not natural. It's not normal. But God's saying, I don't want you to get back to normal. I want you to learn to wait. 
that's going to take some patience. That's going to take some time. And he might be teaching us that very thing right now through this whole situation. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, the prophet Isaiah was speaking to the nation of Israel. He was speaking to Israel when he said that. And look what happened just a few verses later. Listen to this, what happened to the waiters who learned to wait. This is what it said. God said to them, I took you from the ends of the earth, from the farthest corners of the earth, you waiters. I have called you, those who've learned to wait. And I have said about you, you are my servants. I have chosen you. I have not rejected you. To the waiters, the ones who learned to wait, he said, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will uphold you by my righteous hand. What an awesome promise from God from tho for those who've learned to wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It's not normal. It's not natural. Man, we want to get back to normal so bad. I, I feel you, man. You know, sometimes you just want to hug your, somebody else's neck. You don't care what anybody else says, right? Just want some human contact. God's teaching us something through this. And maybe you're here this morning and you're just, you know, you're discouraged. You're tired of this. You're ready to just get out and say, you know what? I don't care what anybody else says. Maybe today you're in a place that the frustration level has gotten so high that you say, you know what? I need a change in my life. God's brought you to this place, maybe to bring you to an end of yourself. It's killing me. And God's like, yeah, I know. I'm doing you a favor. I'm bringing you to an end of yourself. Man, if that's you this morning and you want to turn on your flashers right now, somebody's going to pray for you. I want you to pray together. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for those that are just needing to trust you more that you would encourage us to do that and God I ask for those that need a special touch of prayer maybe a healing in their life encouragement in their spirit God we ask right now that the hand of God would come and speak to hearts and lives minister truth and life and peace wherever we are May the Spirit of the Lord just begin to fill those that are needing that special touch if you need prayer this morning cut on your flashers people are moving about the parking lot they're going to come. They're going to pray for you. If you're watching online right now, God bless you. If you'd like to make a commitment to the Lord this morning online, text or call the number that's on your screen right now. Call that 352-639-1029-1029. Someone will answer that phone and they will, they will speak with you. They'll pray with you. You can invite the Lord into your life right now. And I encourage you to use that number, to text that number. Let us know you're out there. Leave some comments on Facebook as you're watching. Let us know how the stream went this morning. If you enjoyed the service, God bless you. Thanks for watching. Father, I just pray for those right now that are flashing their lights, that are just asking for more. We just pray for the faith and the strength, and the provision and the faithfulness of God. Jesus, we just welcome you into our hearts and lives as we learn to wait upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, God is good. We didn't get the best of news this week. You know, we don't get to go back to normal, but God might be saying, that's a good thing. I don't think God minds it a bit. You know why? Because his thoughts aren't our thoughts. His ways aren't our ways. His timetable's not our timetable. God's got a plan for this time. He's got a plan for this time for you. Why don't you use this time to, to hear from God, to allow him to speak to your heart and to be encouraged. Amen. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. Yes, we will have Mother's Day. We just won't have Mother's Day inside. 
We're going to have some special gifts for our mothers. We're going to do some special singing next week. And I just trust that you'll be here. Uh, pray for great weather. We're just going to believe that God's going to do a great thing. And I know this morning that God is going to encourage you. Thanks. God bless you. Thanks for watching online this morning. I know that God's got this. Have a great rest of your day in Jesus' name. Beautiful name.